Wes Goldberg, cold open question of the day for you. At the, the gold medal ga- men's game between France and USA, here are some of the people sitting courtside that they kept panning to a bunch. Carmelo Anthony, Scotty Pippen, Stefan Marbury, Shakari Richardson, and Jimmy Fallon, who's wearing sunglasses inside for some reason. Who do you want to sit next to of those five? Uh, I can't believe I'm saying this. But you said Jimmy Fallon, the, the show's done. Like we're done. I'm not I'm not talking. <laughs> Jimmy to you Fallon was having a great time. He was. He and was. I'm not, I'm not necessarily a Jimmy Fallon guy. I'm not like yeah. anti Jimmy Fallon either. He's not my favorite late night host, but uh he seemed to be having the time of his life. And why was he wearing sunglasses? I think he was inebriated, which sounds sure. awesome. That's uh, true. In terms of vibes. But no, I do think that the answer here is probably Carmelo Anthony, right? Yeah. Like he's got all the yeah. experience. Uh, of playing for Team USA, obviously the NBA experience, knowing LeBron James and a lot of the guys on the team too. So I, I would probably pick Carmelo, but like Jimmy Fallon, I think he started in the upper bowl and then ended up courtside. They kept panning to him. Is the only reason I he's was talking like, to Emmanuel. His... He, he was talking to Emmanuel Macron, like they were taking like a selfie together. I was like, what right. is happening? What is going yeah. on? That's that's when I knew that maybe he was a little bit under the uh, the liquid influence there a little bit, but yeah. You know what? Forget it. I don't, I'm not going to get bullied here. I'm sitting next to Jimmy Fallon. I'm sitting okay. next to Jimmy Fallon. Carmelo Anthony's not going to talk to me. Jimmy Fallon will talk to me. Because he's drunk. Um, I, right. I think in the con- conceit of this question, Wes, I think I'm just assuming they're going to talk to you and chit-chat and just be normal humans, you know? So my answer is well, Stephon Marbury. Well, in that Mar- case, it's Stephon Marbury. Yes. Yeah, it's Stephon Marbury. <laughs> yeah. Stephon Marbury is wearing these crazy glasses. Right. I don't really know what those were. His sunglasses inside made me laugh. He's also just going to have stories at the wazoo. Yeah. And he's and he has played against some of these guys. He obviously like of a similar oak but been around a long time, like just a basketball legend. It would also just be cool to be like, you know, I was randomly at the Paris games and talked to Stefan Marbury for a while. I would just like to tell Stefan Marbury I had the Marbury's dude. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank That's you. That's right. I the- can't pay less. It feels wrong that none of us picked Shakari Richardson because she literally is like a gold medalist and like one of our greatest athletes. I right have now. nothing in common with her. Like I would love to like I, to yeah. me, I would love to do a podcast with her. I would love to interview yeah. her and learn more about her and her life and her sport. But I don't like all I know is that you run. Like I don't. I'm yeah. not going to sit here and pretend that I know anything about that sport. I, I have no history. I have nothing. So I'd be yeah. like, look, I. In terms of small talk, there's going to be very little common ground. Give me the NBA players. Give me Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> drunk that's more of what I, my speed yeah i should not be next to jimmy fallon for this reason i would think a, he's i don't know wes have you ever watched band of brothers you ever yes. watched band of brothers okay jimmy fallon being like a in that show when he drives he's like driving like a supply delivery jeep at some point and it's like it he is so out of tone with everyone else in the show but like jimmy why were you in, like, how did this happen? You were really bad in Band of Brothers. I would personally need to be like, what are you talking to me about? I'm Jimmy Fallon. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm much more successful, and I have a late night show. Like, Jimmy, you're He might like agree that, that he was bad in Band of Brothers. There's a reason he doesn't do movies or shows anymore. Right? Yeah, it's like Fever Pitch and, like, his weird role in Band of Brothers, and it's like, it's I watched done. Fever Pitch the other day, and when Why? I say I watched it, I mean my wife put it on, and I walked okay. into the living room. Okay. And it sucked me in. Okay. I watched it till the end, and I'm like, yep. This is how that movie ends. This is actually how you make peace with with Boston. Wes's fever pitch. That's what happened. I guess so. That's right. All right. On today's show, Olympics. Team USA won. We're going to look ahead to 2028. That's coming up today on the Just Basketball Show. Oh, a spectacular move. Hey there, welcome into the Just Basketball Show. I'm Chris Manning. That is Wes Goldberg. Have some news at the top. Got to say that Brendan Clean has has left the show. Kind of Irish goodbye. His last episode is, is the way I would say it. <laughs> but uh, Brendan here since the beginning with me, and you know was Keen bringing Wes on Key on a ton of different stuff. Just wanted to say shout out to Brendan. He's gonna kill it with Locked On Suns. Some stuff coming at awful announcing as well. well I'm sure yeah, he'll it's be good news for Brendan. It's it's yeah. uh, he's got a promotion. He's leaving us behind. Yeah. He's, yeah. He's graduated from fever pitch to late night show. That's right. He's he's the Jimmy Fallon of the Just Basketball show. If he like most say, people would agree with that. Yeah, that's right. So shout out to Brendan. I'm sure he'll be back at one point or another to talk about the the Phoenix Sun too. Who surely will have a normal NBA season this fall. I'm sure nothing weird will happen with that basketball team. But I remind you to follow, rate, and review on your podcast app platform of choice. Hit subscribe on the Just Basketball Fans YouTube channel. 
and check us out on TikTok, Instagram, and X. Want to tell you too that support for today's episode comes from BetMGM. If you haven't signed up for BetMGM yet, use bonus code Just Basketball, and you'll get up to a fifteen hundred dollar first bet offer on your first wager with BetMGM. Here is how it works: Step one. Download the BetMGM Sportsbook app on iOS or Android and sign up using code JUSTBASKETBALL. Step 2. Deposit at least $10 and place your first wager on any game. Step 3. You will receive up to $1,500 back in bonus bets if the bet loses. Just make sure to use bonus code JUSTBASKETBALL when you sign up. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Must be 21 or older to wager. Terms and conditions apply. Wes, let's start a little bit about this game and just I want I think we need to hit on it for like five minutes because Steph Curry in this game incredible LeBron I think in this tournament pretty darn incredible and I will I think remember LeBron Durant Curry as a thing and I also was really struck by just how good and better for team he was I thought Bam and Anthony Davis were than a beat and that made me wonder about center you know the center spot in the future but Team USA wins a very fun game, I think, in general. Wembenyama, incredible in the final on both ends. His best offensive game for a large stretch of this tournament. But anything percolate for you coming out of that final? The vibes, man. The vibes were awesome. It was Steph Curry, LeBron James, and Kevin Durant, quite possibly their last dance mm-hmm. in, in some respect, right? Or not their last dance, but their last great accomplishment, right? I don't if, if we were putting money on some sort of bet MGM odds of will Kevin Durant, LeBron James and Steph Curry combined win one more championship, like over under 0.5 championships for the three of them combined. Yeah. Most people take the under on that. Uh, yeah. And I think, I think I would take the under on that. I would too. So was this the last great accomplishment for the three players that defined a decade plus of the NBA who have dominated the championship and MVP conversation for years, have dominated the headlines for years, are not only the face of the NBA because of their success, but the face of the NBA because of their marketability, because of what they mean to the sport, right? To to the people who are younger than them. And in many cases, their, their own teammates, a guy like Anthony Edwards looking up at Kevin Durant, that is his favorite player, who didn't look up at Steph Curry and LeBron James growing up that was on Team USA right now. So, um... The, to for three players whose careers were in some ways intertwined, always competing against each other at various points of their careers, who have had all very different kinds of careers, and yet, like, you can't separate them in NBA history, yeah, even a little bit. For them to come together at the end, this is why LeBron James sort of calls them the Avengers, right? For them to come together at the end here and accomplish what is probably going to be their last great accomplishment each right is historical it's important and it was so much fun to watch because all I could think about when LeBron James and Steph Curry were running that impossible to stop two-man game at the top of the floor over and over again in the fourth quarter and you've got every player on Team USA just looking at LeBron and Steph and just saying take us home take us to gold it's up to you guys and they just form this like partnership that is un unstoppable mm-hmm. in basketball terms. Like that that is like the coolest thing, man. Like I don't know. Like for, for their stories to be so intertwined, but then for also to be like this incredible basketball fit at the same time, right? This it, it it's sort of wild. It kinda and it it just makes me think I'm like, what could have been? Like, how do we get LeBron and Steph on the court together? Can we trade LeBron to the Warriors? Can we trade Steph to the Lakers? Can we put these two guys on the same team? How do we how do what can I see more of this? Because I'm not ready for this to end, but that it is going to end. Yeah. And that's what makes it so special. Yeah, two things I'll say on that, and then I, I have a list for you of of combos I want to see of guys playing together coming out of this tournament. I, I had this thought thinking about it. Number one, um seeing considering how like tense it was at times during their finals matchups, to see LeBron and Curry hitting the sleep together yeah. is just like one of the wildest things. I did I did peak. Jason okay. Tatum didn't do it. I was like, will he do it? <laughs> Because he got debuted, it was debuted against him. He didn't do it. He didn't do it. Yeah, I mean, uh, fair, Jason Tatum. No, it's the right move not to do it. You could have owned it. It would have been a little bit of like Drake at the end of the Kendrick Lamar beef, just being like, "I actually fed you all this stuff." Yeah, and everybody knew it was a lie. It would have been like a little sad. 
Yeah, it would have been really like, uh, I'm please don't put in the newspaper that I'm mad energy from Jason Tatum, who seems like he had the least amount of fun of anybody at these Olympics. I understand. We'll get to why. Tatum later. We'll, we'll, we'll get, get to Tatum, Tatum later. Yes. But here's my here's my five combos of guys yes. I want to see. Okay, number one, number five. We'll start at five. Yeah. I want Anthony Edwards and Drew Holiday to play together. I just think like what Anthony Edwards oh. is gonna grow into. Like pri- like Drew Holiday, if he's not gonna be with the Celtics. I think that would be like the great thing I would want to see with him is like give me Drew Holiday as this like combo guard who can hit spot up shots, but doesn't really need to play traditional point guard. Has Ant a sense to just having the ball all the time? Mm-hmm. I kind of want that and defensive coverage for Ant. That was my that was my first thought. It's a good combo, right? It's a little bit of evolved form of Mike Conley and Anthony Edwards, right? You just get a little bit of a better defender. About the same as a three-point shooter, but you got a guy who can hold his own defensively, and then you put Edwards and, and Drew Holiday in the backcourt defensively. That's a nightmare for okay. opponents, so it's a good combo. Number four, Devin Booker and Bam Adebayo. These guys are just about How is the this right only set. number four? Okay, it, keep be, going. Because because I have like more nostalgic pulls for the top of this list, is what All I'm right. going to say. Right. Like Number one, you can already guess. I'm sure you can already guess what This is, is my number one. Okay. I, I figured this is number one. This is also... <laughs> I, I thought of you, and I think this... As, like, two dudes who seem just wired the same way, Wes, yep. like, about it. Like, Booker will talk about more um, as we think about the future and think about guys who, you know, shape themselves by these Olympics. I came away just more impressed by him than just about anybody on this roster and what I thought he was capable of. Really good performance from Booker. Him and Bam together. The two-man game for them would be incredible. The, the handoffs, the passing, the, the smarts, the tough. Like, I would love a, a Booker-Bam combo. That would be great. Both are Kentucky guys. Yep. If Devin Booker is looking for stability after playing for about 20 different head coaches during his (laughs) eight-year NBA career, uh, go to the place that just signed their head coach to an eight-year extension and has been has had the same ownership and the same guy at the top since the late 80s. Uh, If you want stability, Devin Booker, I know a place. Called Miami. I did see a clip of Devin Booker doing like some like podcast on a golf course where he told me he said he thought he was getting drafted by Miami. He did. I did see that. Yeah. Yeah. He thought he was going to get drafted by Miami. He had a great workout with the Heat. Justice Winslow, who was supposed to go four to the New York Knicks, according to most mock drafts, slides all the way to the Heat. They did not interview Justice Winslow prior to the draft, but they were so surprised that Winslow was still there. And this is on the heels of LeBron James leaving. They were looking sort of for their small forward of the future. They went ahead and took Justice Winslow over Devin Booker. It's one of the great what ifs. It really is. Now, had they taken Devin Booker two years later, probably not in position to take Bam out of bio because Devin Booker was so good so quickly. So whatever. But that's a whole that's like a locked on heat episode. I don't have to do all yeah. that. Go ahead. No, but it's good. It's a good alternative. Number three, Katie and Ant. Katie and okay. Ant are just like spirit animals of different eras that's it i just those guys playing together and acting like themselves the two most comfortable being just themselves and not being media trained of anybody in the league and it's a good thing that's a good thing i absolutely think that's a great thing katie just tweeting and reacting to it both just shit talkers I, I i those two guys together would just be like hooper's paradise yep kevin durant underrated trash talker yeah. he is always chatting on the court, and obviously Anthony Edwards is too. Yeah. This this list is kind of a, about Steph, so number two is going to be Drew Holiday and Steph. This is probably too high oh, for this. Boring. Such I know. A, such a basketball nerd. Yes. This is Drew really Holiday where Booker— Steph. Drew Holiday Look. should not have been in two spots on your top five Absolutely. list here. Come on. That's fair. Devin Booker and Bam should have been two. Number one, LeBron and Steph. This is the there easiest is. one. Yes, that's it. LeBron and Steph— I can't believe I'm saying this as someone who like watched those warriors Cavs series, but— Watching every, they only did it like a couple times a game. It, it was something that I think in like a NBA context, you would have just seen spammed over and over again. That's one of the differences between, you know, international ball and NBA ball. The two man game where it's like LeBron, it's just like Curry sets like a slip screen mm-hmm. and like they trap LeBron because they're like, oh shit, it's LeBron. And then Curry just pops and it's like, guess what? It's the best shooter ever just popping for a three. Good luck. And it's just like, how do you defend any of that? There's no good option against those two guys. You could put a, a guy in the a center of the dunker spot whose job is to offensive rebound and defend. Like you could, and you put two other like three and D wings around them and you just run that action 900 times. And I don't think teams would find a good answer to stop it. So a couple of things there. 
Um, you're right. There is no way to stop it. And you literally saw like the French wires get crossed yeah. every time they ran it. They they would trap either Steph or LeBron, and then they would leave the other one open. And there was just miscommunication. They didn't know how to do it. They were overreacting to either which way. It never worked. It never worked. And then it did work. It finally worked. After Steph hit three straight three pointers in the fourth quarter, they finally trapped Steph at the top of the at the top of the floor at the right time, timed it right, got him to pick up his dribble, and then what did he do? He hit the craziest shot Steph Curry has ever hit in his life, yeah. falling away three pointer to as the dagger to win the gold medal. So even when you do do the right thing to stop it, it doesn't matter because Steph Curry is still Steph Curry. He he hit the shot that he missed over Kevin Love in Game Seven of 2016. Is the shot is basically the shot that he just hit. It's the over falling away. Over a second away. person too. Yeah. yeah, over a second. It's like he hit he hit the shot that he was like too fatigued to hit. And this, it's like, oh, I'm not. I'm Steph Curry and I'm absolutely rolling. Yeah, it, it was it was an unreal shot. Um, it so that's the first thing. It is an unstoppable two man game. The the second thing is. Isn't this what the Bucks envisioned Giannis and Damian Lillard were supposed to be? Now, a version it's not of a more blunt. For, I think it's like a more blunt force. That the Giannis Dame is a more blunt force version of it. I think. Right, Giannis isn't the passer, or the even uh, the outside shooter that LeBron is. So there is a little bit of a limitation there, but he's huge, and if you do help off him even a little bit, then you're giving him you know the drive lane, the driving lane to the basket, which you just can't give him. Uh, and so yeah, if I'm if I'm Doc Rivers, I'm watching this and I'm like. Oh yeah, this is why I'm supposed. This is why everybody on Twitter is like, "Why isn't this not every single play? Why are you not running the Damian Lillard, Giannis two man game every single play?" Now, Steph Curry, most underrated part I think of his career has been how willing of a screener he is. Yeah, I just don't know that Damian Lillard is that willing of a screener. Giannis is not even that willing of a screener, except for only recently has he sort of picked that up a little bit more. LeBron James, a very willing screener. Steph yes. Curry, a very willing screener because they understand. What it does for them, right? Like, okay, if I just set this screen, everything else is going to open up for me and my teammates, and then I'm, and that sets everything up. Uh, I don't know. I would love to just get an honest answer from some of these NBA players about, like, you know, it works. Why don't you do it more? Like, why are you not? It's the same thing about off ball movement. Like, why do you, why do players just stand there sometimes? It's it, a great, it, it's a great question. I, I I understand that, like, easy for me to say in my desk chair doing a podcast. I'm not the one running around with and, and losing energy, but like that's sort of the point, right? Is you know, get yourself into playing shape, get yourself like if somebody if these guys can do it, people can more people I think can do it, right? And so I don't know, that's a whole other side, but that's really the thing that unlocks it. It's not just the three point shooting, it's not just the, the the genius basketball IQ from LeBron James, it's the fact that they're willing to do those little things to make that big thing work, yeah. And you mean, you just imagine like what they would do and like them it would be like with them getting the best chance they could to actually try to win something down the stretch here that would if, be it right like if they yeah. paired together i would pick them to win the championship i would just be like you know what i don't care i'm not gonna overthink it it's the two greatest players of the generation two of the smartest players of this generation they'll figure it out and it's unstoppable but what team would it be more fun for them to be on would it be a the lakers b the warriors and never mind how it happens or what the trade is that's not a, the Lakers, B, the Warriors, C, mystery team number three. I think it's the Lakers. I think it's like they fight you because it, it's – I think I, I'm thinking of like who's the third guy, and I'd rather have AD than Draymond. Mm. Mm. AD's a better player than Draymond. I think AD – From an entertainment this, perspective. <laughs> Dr Draymond. And LeBron also has like the bromance with Draymond now, which is also right. very weird. It's almost weird. Also, Draymond being in the photo where Steph's running down the court, and then yes. you realize that like Draymond's the guy with his arms, like it's incredible stuff. Good for Draymond Green. I think AD being like the big who, you know, not as much of a, a passer as Draymond, but just more of an offensive threat, um, a little less volatile – Sure. I think better defensively better, at this point. Uh, yeah, just a better defender at this point. I, I would take AD. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, there would be something about them doing it in Los Angeles with the Lakers that would be... It would be showtime. It, it would, would be, be very showtime. And, it, and yeah. like the Warriors, it would just sort of... I Because LeBron had his battles with the Warriors... It would be so weird. It would be weird. Like... Steph had his battle with LeBron, but Steph never had his battles with the Lakers, right? It yeah. would be a little bit less out of context, even though Steph, outside of anything other than a Warriors jersey, 
would be very out of context. It would be very fish out yeah. of water. But that said, I think I picked mystery team number three instead of one of them kind of deciding to go to the other ones and like that player, the the the, the new player, it's not really his team, and you kind of have a Kevin Durant and Golden State kind of situation. Like if they just did something holistically new on a new team. Like if they just went to like the Chicago Bulls and just did it there or something, <laughs> the Bulls would be a weird one because it's like then it's like LeBron playing for Jordan franchise at the end of his career or something. That would be weird. Is the answer just this is how we get the Vegas team off the ground? Yes, that's the answer. Okay. Yeah, just they, do one year. Just thirty, do uh forty-two year old LeBron James and thirty-nine year old Steph Curry, and just put them on the Vegas team and let them do their thing. Yeah, that's what we do here. Okay, let's go ahead to look to the future a little bit. Let's get ahead into the 2028 Olympic roster. Obviously, I th- you know I think no LeBron. LeBron has said as much. He's obviously going to be old as hell mm-hmm. by then. Uh, looking very gray <laughs> at these Olympics in itself. They don't, don't sell th- hair dye in Paris. They apparently do not. Um, I don't think we're going to see Curry. This is going to be like a one and done Curry Olympics. Yep. We're not going to see Durant again. This is like truly the end of of that era. We're gonna we're gonna phase into something different. I think this roster, Wes, I've seen, I've read a couple different um, estimations of what this roster could be. I think it could, I think we could see like some weird stuff is is really where I'm wondering if this ends up being kind of a, a hodgepodge kind of yeah. random kind of roster. I think I have a couple locks and let's start here. Before you get there. Yes. Can I ask you a question? This might've been yeah. your lock anyway. Okay. Anthony Davis, 31 years old currently. Yeah. Are we... Are we considering him as somebody who four years from now, as a big man with injury history, might be an option for Team USA? Did you have him on your list? I had him on my list. I think I would have I think I would see him as more likely than Embiid is where I kind of my head kind of went. As one I, of those guys stays, I think it's probably AD. Embiid is already hinting that he could go to Cameroon for the next round of the Olympics. Uh which I, like good for him. If if he can that he would got make the gold sense. medal. Um, I actually think that by the end of this thing, he ended up finding his voice on the Team mm-hmm. USA squad. So there would be no judgment if he went. Like He would be a little bit man of without a country or just a man of many countries, I suppose. But do your thing, Embiid. Um, yeah. Anthony Davis, to me, if he wants to be on it, will be on it. Four years from now, it could be a little dicey, but I have him on my list. Um, and I don't have Embiid on my list either. So I think you okay. and I agree there. Okay. So I think the first lock is Anthony Edwards. Yes. Just give me all your locks. How many do you have? Um, I have. I only have five. I have one, two, three, four, five. I have six. Okay. So let's let's see. So we have. We both have Ant. Both have Ant. Okay. I have Devin Booker. Yep. I have Bam. Yep. I have Jason Tatum. Yep. That actually might be on my only. That's the only ones I feel like super compelled by as far as mm. locks goes. So I had Anthony Davis as sort of a lock, okay. but I don't so know if I, that counts. Yeah, I, I have him as like half a lock. I think. Right, it's, it's it's like four and a half. He's on. He has it if he wants it. Yes, but because he's older than these guys, he might just be aged out at that point. Uh, Halliburton, not a lock for you. It's just he didn't play. You know, I I don't know. Like, is there a world where like Brunson gets it over him? I think Halliburton's a lock. I think if you're projecting four years from now, okay. we're looking at basically the Steve Nash of the NBA. It's just like he's oh, okay. gonna, but American and not yeah. You know, Canadian. So, yeah. Um, I've got Halliburton as a lock. Okay. This he is might not I, start, but I think he'll be yeah. on the roster. Yeah. yeah, maybe. I I did enjoy how he had fun with um his his not playing. I didn't. He handled it. I think incredibly well. He handled it better than some of his teammates. Um. Yes. So th- we have like five or well, let's call it five locks with Anthony Davis as sort of like a wild card, um, age, an age related wild card. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven guys, mm-hmm. sort of on my short list for the final like six or seven spots. Yeah. Let's start. Let's just alternate names back and forth and nominate some guys who should be in the running. Let's do it that Ooh, way. I like I like the nomination. That's good. Right. Uh, you want to go first? You go first. All right. My first nomination: Jalen Brown. Yeah. I mean, if if they can, if he's open to it, and like he's not being weird. I mean, we're in the era of calling dudes weird. He's been kind of weird about this whole thing. He'll only be 31. Um, I think he would be a great – if they need wings. Like, that next Olympic roster is going to need some yeah. wings. Like, it is going to be light on wings. He would be fully there, I think, if 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 he's open to it. 
yeah, I mean, look, there's the whole history between him and Grant Hill now, who runs yeah. Team USA. If he's willing to bury the hatchet and put that behind him, you're absolutely right. This team is going to need wings, and it kind of like my the, when I'm looking at this roster, regardless of who the next group is beyond the locks that we have. When I look at it, I'm like, okay, well, who is the LeBron James, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant of this group? I, I think we might be exiting a golden era of Team USA basketball and entering a new era, era that's a little bit more questionable. That said, we have four years for guys like Devin Booker, Anthony Edwards, Jason Tatum, Bam Adebayo, like these guys to just Tyrese Halliburton to get better and to kind of, you know, take the reins of mm -hmm. what LeBron James, Steph Curry, and Kevin Durant are leaving behind here. Um, there's questions about whether or not Steve Kerr is even going to be the head coach of this team. I guess we could like that that part we could figure out, but also a golden generation of of coaching when it's like you see Kerr, Spo, and Ty Lu, the three best coaches in the NBA for my money, yeah. sitting next to each other, drawing up game plans. It's just like holy shit! Like that's yeah. incredible. So I think you know Jason Tatum already has the one championship. If they if the Celtics win another one, he could go from basically. DNPCDs out of the rotation in the Olympics to maybe being the guy mm -hmm. in the Olympics, that's a very real possibility for Jason Tatum. And then if you add his teammate, Jalen Brown, to the mix, who could be, I mean, you could already argue they are the best wing duo in the NBA. They will obviously be the best wing duo in the NBA four years from now, more likely than not, I should say. So there's a world where it was Jason Tatum like out of the rotation just because the job he needs to have for Team USA is sort of the job that LeBron James already had. Big wing who can handle the ball and just sort of set the table for everybody else. I do wonder if the next Olympics is Jason Tatum's Olympics, you know, it, for Team yeah, USA. It, it, it might be, and it, it might it maybe depends on coach a little bit, something like that, but I, I think it's very possible that he is is there. So I, and most Browns, people, I think, would yeah. say Anthony Edwards is, is, is the next face of Team USA. You would USA. think. I think most people are just ready to anoint him. I love Anthony Edwards. This is not like an anti-Anthony Edwards thing. I just tend to be a little bit more cautious of anointing the guy who hasn't really accomplished anything other than going to one Western Conference Finals over the guy who's yeah. more seasoned and has the championship credentials already. I'm just going to say it could be Ant and Tatum. It could also be Booker, what I would say. It could also be Devin Booker, depending on what happens with him and, and Phoenix and the rest of his career. But okay, uh, so I, I nominated Jalen Brown. I think he's another guy if... They can kind of bury the hatchet. Maybe that's a that 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 seems like a strong possibility. Who do you who do you uh, nominate next? I think Paolo Bencaro is the name yep, I go to. I have him 20, too. 25 at that point. Probably be an All Star by then. You would think. Probably should play the World Cup the next time through. I think he should be one of the main guys on that roster. Yeah, this just feels like big wing, scorer, bucket getter. Just feels like the biggest obvious need filler of anyone that they could go get for the next cycle. Uh, again, like Tatum, sort of a, a playmaking power, uh, forward with size. That's the thing that kept working over and over again for Team USA and FIBA is that our best playmakers were also some of our biggest players. And there's not a lot of, other than Serbia, basically, there's not another team in the tournament that can really say that. Other than, maybe, I guess, Australia with Josh Giddy. And Josh Giddy's like 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, whatever yeah. he is. But... You know what I'm talking about, like these big wings who can just pass over all these switching defenses and size and all this stuff. So I had Pancaro on my list. It's a good pick. Um, I'll go with I'll go with um, Jalen Brunson next. Yeah. If he keeps trending in this direction with the Knicks, he plays for the Knicks. He was part of the FIBA World Cup team. Didn't make this Team USA round, but um, looks like he's going to be one of the best 15 players in the NBA for a while. He's on this if he wants it. And just a, a bucket getter that... This team is going to need. Yeah, I think 100% that's true. I'm going to go... I'm going to go young here and, and just bring him up now because I think it's it's a, it's a unsure about where this will end up, but I think when you look at some of the candidates for the back end of this roster, I've seen like Josh Hart thrown out there. Like I've seen like Brandon Miller thrown out there. Mm. I'm going to I'm gonna just throw out Cooper Flag. It'll be 21. I have him on my list. Yep. He killed it in these workouts. I think the hype is going to just be there for him. If he, you know, ESPN had this in their in their projection. Um, only two players have made a USA Olympic roster before age 22 since 2004. Anthony Davis in 2012. Do you know the other one? It's not LeBron? It, it's not LeBron. I don't since know. 2004. So he might have been, he would have been, you know, under that at, in 2004 when he, when he played in Greece. 
I don't know. Keldon Johnson in 2021, who was a last minute replacement. So, like, obviously, like, you know, pretty, like, pretty great pretty, company. Yeah, pretty great company. But Cooper Flag being a 2028 Olympian at age 21 could be competitive spots. But if he hits the ground running and they want to get someone in young, maybe he, maybe, you know, sets the stage for him to be like a lead guy in the World Cup roster two years after that. I, I yeah. think this is entirely possible that we see Cooper Flag at the Olympics in 2028 in LA. Well, under Grant Hill, they have made an effort to groom the next generation as of they USA should. players. As right? they should. Absolutely. As they should. And so if you're projecting four years from now, if it's Anthony Edwards, Devin Booker, Jason Tatum, Tyrese Halliburton, the, 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 the group that's been groomed right now, they take over. Well, then who backfills them? Cooper Flag makes a lot of sense. And period, end of story, if he's just the guy everybody thinks he's going to be three he's years into his NBA career, I would put him as a lock on this team, but we just don't yeah. know if he's we don't know yeah. if he's that guy yet because he's never played an NBA possession. So, uh, but yeah, I had Cooper Flag on my list. I'll go Chet Holmgren next. Yeah, this he there's an interesting center I think race that will happen for the other spots in this roster. Does Jaron Jackson get himself involved back in? I would I would lean no. The rebounding and the World Cup stuff really soured me on him as a FIBA guy. Evan Mobley I think could be in that running, and Derek Lively too. If you wanted just a rim running dunker guy, like I think there are other options. Yep. And if it's only Bam, it, maybe AD and, and Embiid are gone, and it's only Bam, you're going to have a need for one or two other guys. I think there's a lane for, for Chet. I think there's a lane for Mobley. I think Chet would be at the head of the class right now though, because of the, the offensive skill set and versatility he has. Right. He could shoot from outside. Is he even going to be considered a center? Yeah. Four years from now, right? You're playing now with Isaiah Hardenstein, who's under contract for three more years. Is that something that Oklahoma City does? I don't know that – I mean, is is – is that the starting front court? Is that the closing front court? Whatever. But is Chet looked at more as a power forward maybe at this stage of his career where you could play him with Bam Adebayo, right? Because of the shooting and all that kind of stuff. Um, I think Derek Lively is also a great option. Evan Mobley obviously is a great option. It really just depends on how the next few years go for all those guys. But I think Jaron Jackson Jr., I wouldn't rule him out either, especially if Anthony Davis is off the team by then mm -hmm. and you're looking for something similar in terms of we need a – like a shot blocking center who can be with Bam because as good as great as Bam is defensively, he's not a shot blocking center. He's not really he doesn't have, provide a ton of size. So if you're looking for somebody a little bit bigger who can kind of just protect the rim and then have Bam do what he did for Team USA, who just play more of a power forward, be a little bit more versatile defensively, get out, switch onto the perimeter, do all these other things that he does so well, then maybe you're looking for more of that traditional seven footer. And if that's the case, you could go Chet, you could go Mobley, you can go. Derek Lively, Jaron Jackson Jr. I think all of those guys would be options. Yeah, I think that's that's right. All right, um, I'm going to throw out a name that I'm not sure about, but I think he's worth discussing. That's Zion Williamson. I don't have him as a lock. I'm not even sure. There's, a, I think there's a there's a at least a couple other names I would throw out ahead of him as far as my confidence in that they'll they'll be there. But if Zion is healthy the next couple of years, and he's physically where we know him to be. And he's as good as we know as he can be, and maybe the the defense comes around and and all of that. Would he not just be like a great wrecking ball in FIBA and a pretty good fit on this roster for what they're going to need? Like if he is right, Zion on Team USA at age twenty eight makes all the sense in the world. He would be a lot of what they need. I I I come short of saying he'd be the perfect fit. He'd be exactly what they need. Yeah, the shooting's but... maybe not quite there and and whatnot. But if you are, I think if you're a Pelicans fan, this is the best case scenario. This is what you're rooting for is that three years from now, Zion Williamson is in such good shape and he's accomplished so much in the NBA and has a respect level for a guy who has basically been uninvolved with the Team USA program throughout his career for various reasons to then suddenly be involved and perhaps be the guy or one of the guys on this team would be the best case scenario if you're a Pelicans fan rooting for the best case scenario for Zion Williamson. Yeah. Uh, so... It's a great name. It's one that has to be discussed. It is maybe the biggest wild card in what if and unknown when we're talking about guys who could potentially be part of the next Team USA program. So but just, um, just think about like a five of like Brunt of like Booker, Ant, Tatum, mm -hmm. Zion, and Chet. Like good fucking luck the rest of the world dealing with that. Yeah, it fits. It works. Um, 
it would be a great it would be a great outcome, and I think everybody should be rooting for it. I don't know anybody that like roots against Zion Williams, and everybody no, Z- wants to see the best version of him. The best version um, of Zion is something we need. Like everyone deserves to have. Well, not deserves, but every the best version of Zion is something everyone should want in their basketball. We deserve diet. it, man. We've gone through. It's been a rough few years <laughs> for, the, for the United States, so we yeah, deserve it. Yeah, I think we, yeah, that's right. We've earned it. Yeah. Um, I've got one other name that I think we should bring up. We don't have to spend a ton of time on it. Okay. But we already mentioned the incumbents who are young, who mm-hmm. will be within the age window for the next round of this thing. Mm-hmm. We did not mention Derek White. Yeah, he thirty four at the next Olympics is is where my pause came from. Is he gonna be thirty four in the next Olympics? Yeah. All right, then forget it. All right, I have another nomination. But so he's can I... but, he, but he's a great but it, like if you wanted a veteran guard who like Steve Kerr called a FIBA player, could do worse. Like, and there's not like it's who's the heir apparent to Derek White in the Team USA pipeline? Like, is the best or example? Drew right, is the best example Jalen Suggs? Perhaps. Like, or really, not two magic players on Team USA? That seems like a bad representation. Orlando Magic. Orlando uh, Magic. Uh, it could like be Derek the, White. It could yeah. be, uh, who knows? Who knows? Uh, I mean, is a guy like Devin Carter, who was just drafted by the Sacramento Kings, uh, doing some injury issues, but considered one of the best defensive guards as a rookie, at least in terms of his projections that we've seen in a really long time. Is that somebody who four years from now could just sort of emerge as a guy, right? So... Um, you know, there could be something like that. A few names that we haven't mentioned. Mm-hmm. Oh, wait, no, no. Derek White was my nomination. You're up. Jalen Williams is, is I think, the, I the next list. big obvious one, I think. He just feels like head of the curve of the star wing that they're going to need. More advanced than some of the other guys. We'll get into some. I think just his, his shooting compared to some of the other options, I think, will be good. I think his defense will be huge. For this roster, I just think he he would just be like a very plug and play, not as you know, as good as some of the other guys, but a need and versatile shooter. Sign me up for J Dub on the Olympic roster. Yep, Two I had him on my list. Um, I did not have Mikael Bridges on my list. I didn't have in terms of looking for other two way Ma- wings. Mikael's on my long list. Wasn't like not. I think we're done. I think we're done with the Mikael Bridges. Like, what is yeah. he kind of thing? I think now he got traded to the Knicks. Yeah. He's going to be a supporting cast role player who's probably overpaid and, but everybody loves him, and that's fine. And that's sort of what he is. But yeah, I think when you're looking at guys like Jalen Brown, Jalen Williams, Halibin Caro, their ceilings way over what it is that Mikael Bridges is going to be. And Mikael Bridges and all these guys were fine for the FIBA world cup, but we just saw what works Mm -hmm. in team USA. You just need dudes who make stuff happen and yep. i think my biggest critique of Mikal bridges is he doesn't really make a lot of things happen yeah there's a lot of things that he could do on the floor but he doesn't create domino effects there's yeah. no propulsive kind of uh like traits to his play it's very Correct. much just sort of like filling in the cracks which yeah can be useful i mean maybe Mikal bridges is the next drew holiday maybe he's just like hey go out there play defense yeah. Shoot, hit hit open threes perhaps that's an option but um a few names who are young enough to make sense but feel like we just kind of overlook them for whatever reason. I'm going to give you four guys. You just tell me which one you want most on the team or is more interesting to talk about. Okay. Donovan Mitchell, De'Aaron Fox, Tyrese Maxey, John Morant. I think Mitchell is interesting, but I don't think he's going to – I think like he could get like positionally kind of overlapped. It feels like he might have missed his opportunity. He'll be 31 by then. Yep. Ja, I think Fox gets old. I think Jaws the. In- I think Maxi feels like the one that I would bet most on making it, but I think Jaws the most interesting one to talk about. I think Jaw versus Maxi as like a who gets there kind of thing would be fascinating. Give you different things. Maxi a better shooter. Jaw more of a, a playmaker for others. Um, downhill gives you transition buckets. Could that could him as a driving kick guy in FIBA and a, and a rim attacker be really huge. Both maybe defensive concerns based on their size in FIBA. But that that's like feels like a, a quasi race for one of the point guard spots on this roster. The John Morant thing is the more interesting one to talk about because we're less than 24 months removed from talking about John Morant possibly being the next face of the NBA. Yeah. And when you look at the next wave after LeBron James, Steph Curry, and Kevin Durant, it would make sense. Okay, whoever the face of the NBA is – Needs to be on the Team USA roster. The American face of the NBA needs to be on the Team USA roster. 
And it kind of feels like Anthony Edwards stole John Morant's lunch money a little bit, right? Where it was John Morant two years ago was like the next face of the NBA. And then one year later, it's Anthony Edwards is the next face of the NBA. Yeah, it, it was a combo of Ant being the most charismatic human and, and awesome in basketball. And then Ja doing a lot of very dumb things that, and getting hurt and then keeping him ja took the himself, yeah, 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 he, he took himself out of the equation for various reasons. And I do think that the rehabilitation tour of John Morant is going to be really important. I don't see really how John Morant and Anthony Edwards play together. Nope. That, to me, is a rough basketball fit. Now, maybe that's different four years from now. They Both of their games revolve respect, evolve respectively or something like that. But it it is going to be really interesting to see what happens with John Morant, and specifically John Morant versus Anthony Edwards going forward, because that does feel like a race. We, I think we forget how awesome John Morant was. Yeah. He was better than Anthony Edwards was. Like, John Morant in his best season has been better than Anthony Edwards in his best season. I think we're all projecting forward Anthony Edwards to pace, be one of the best five guys in the NBA, and that's fine if that's the projection forward. But based on what they've accomplished so far, John Morant has been the better NBA player. And he comes back. How much of what he was does does he is he still, right? Is, yeah. Can he And can he build on it? And if he can... The race to be the next great American guard is still open. If Ja Morant can, you know, reestablish what he was prior to the injury, which we again just sort of gloss over, the guy got hurt for with a season-ending injury, mm -hmm. and and all the off-the-court stuff, which is just hard to come back from. I mean, health-wise or not, it's just it's where you have seen an athlete in any sport deal with ja, what Ja Morant has dealt with off the court, and just come back and be the same guy, right? Yeah. I think about like Tiger Woods Thanksgiving. You know what I mean? It's it's hard to come back from sort of being rattled in that way. So that said, if John Morant does sort of reestablish himself as one of the faces of the league, you have to put him on the Team USA roster. But then if you do put him on the Team USA roster, where is the fit between him and Anthony Edwards? Who is sort of the lead guy? Where, like, who's the alpha of that group? I, I think it's a fascinating question because they don't work together on the court. They can't play him together. Yeah, like right? Booker and Ant would be a better fit because like Booker can Easily. play point and like defensively, yeah. it almost feels like Ja Shooting. might be like yeah, Ja might be like a super sub on Team USA. Like you might just be like a, a nuclear bomb you throw on throw on the court. It would be, be like, it, go it could be a little bit of like what Jason Tatum was, where yeah, we don't doubt you're one of the best seven guys on the roster, but we just don't have a place to put you. Yeah, you know, and so but it would just it would be. But if, like again, if John Morant becomes what we all thought he was going to be 24 months ago, it would be wild for that to be the result here. Yeah, I'm going to just list you out a bunch of names. We can we can end here on on this. Just okay. name. You tell me if there's anyone you, you feel like talking about. Scotty Barnes, I think should should be in the running. Kate Pass. Cunningham in the running. Pass. Not not passing for Team USA. Passing in terms of I just don't want to talk yeah. about him. Yeah. Here's the the four select guys from the 2021 2023 draft. Excuse me, Brandon Miller, Jaime Hawkins Jr., Brandon Pajemski, and Ahmed Thompson. Those were the four select guys. So I think if they're on that select roster, that tells you that Team USA is considering them. And then you have Trey Murphy, you have Jalen Suggs, and you have Evan Mobley. Those are the the end of the guys that I think are are kind of like on the fringes here. All good names. Um, not terribly motivated to talk about any of them i mean no. i think it like the the jaime Hakez Podzimski thing was this like did they just hit the hardest part of their developmental curve and they just sort of plateau a little bit from here do they become the superstar players the all-star players that the warriors are talking about pods can be that the heat hope that jaime Hakez jr can be if that's the case then yeah maybe they have a chance trey murphy the third seems like a guy who again depending on how the roster lays out if you're looking for your next Derek white he could possibly be that, just a guy, yeah. plug and play, play great Herb, defense, hit open Herb, threes. I've seen Herb Jones thrown out there as well in that one. If it could, a little bit I of just, a tougher fit, but yeah. I, I think you're just going to see like a role player on that. I, I would project you're going to see one or two just like guys we think of as like role guys, like Jalen Suggs and Herb Jones or Jalen Suggs and Trey Murphy, unless Trey Murphy ascends to like fringe all-star status. Like yep. I think we're going to get something kind of kind of random like that. And the great thing about this is we could project forward and we probably have a pretty good idea, but somebody... Nobody would have had Derek White on this team four years ago. No. You know, like somebody is going to just take this leap that we didn't expect and be a part of a winning team, be a part of a championship team, which is why I think like betting on a team like Minnesota or Oklahoma City, teams with like these great young cores, even like a Houston, mm -hmm. is there somebody from this Rockets squad that just sort of becomes that guy yeah. who you just feel like you need to have on this on the Team USA roster? I don't know. I, I think it, it would be 
it's going to be fascinating to see like who's that wild card that we're not even talking about that you and I did not even mention that just sort of leaps up and and becomes one of these guys. Yeah. So Wesley, we have a list, and we're let's get out of here on that list. You have a list here. Tell I us do. about the list. So again, kind of maybe putting a bow on the whole Olympic experience here. I had the top five guys that the Olympics helped the most in terms of their careers, their Q rating, and all these things. Okay. Number five is Bam Adebayo. Yeah. I, this was a tremendous Olympics for him. I think, and I've made this argument before, in a weird way, this might have been Bam's coming out party to the rest of the world because he's a three-time All-Star, Defensive Player of the Year finalist, first-team All-Defense last year, been in the finals twice, and yet it still feels like the the more casual NBA watching world doesn't fully appreciate how good of a player Bam Adebayo is. If I pulled like casual to even like watching every other night NBA fans and asked, is Bam Adebayo one of the best 15 players in the NBA? They would say absolutely not. And I would put Bam in the top 15 in the NBA. And I, I would think feel pretty he's top close. 20 for sure. Yeah, I, I can reframe it to top 20 and I'd still think I get the, the same yeah. answer. No, he's not a top 20 yeah. player. But the list of guys who averaged 19 points, 10 rebounds, three assists, and two stocks last year on 50% shooting is Joel Embiid, Nikola Jokic, Giannis, and Bam. That's it. Yeah. That's the list. Like he is an elite company, and he's putting up 20 points per game while playing defensive player of the year caliber defense for the last five years. There's just what he's doing on both ends is is without without comparison in the league except for like a guy like Anthony Davis or or Giannis and we consider both of those guys easy consensus top 10 guys in the NBA and yet Bam is just sort of left out of that conversation I'm not saying he should be in the top 10 I'm just saying he's kind of just not really thought about in that way until I think now we're team USA where Bam is getting minutes over Jason Tatum who just won a championship pretty consistently he's consistently closing games part of Team USA's best lineups, part of the most important fourth quarter stretches for Team USA. I think people have realized how important and how special Bam is. Even when he's only scoring like two points a game in a lot of these Olympic games, they are seeing all the other things that he does really well. So I've got Bam at number five. These two just, are kind of... Just, just want to say, plus six, uh, the first odds for in July for Defensive Player of the Year this year for NBA. Here's the top five. Wemby minus 250. Gobert plus thirteen hundred, Chet plus fifteen hundred, Bam plus sixteen hundred, and Giannis plus sixteen hundred. Um, I might be throwing a unit or half a unit on on Bam. I just think he's gonna get one at some point. He's that good. Yeah, I want to believe just, that, but uh, it's just the Wemby thing. Is just but the, like, are, but are, are the Spur is the Spurs defense ultimately not that good this year? Like right. minus two fifty for year two of Wemby on a Spurs team that I'm not sure how good they're actually gonna be is. That that's not good value from a betting perspective, and I just would be point. looking. I'd be looking elsewhere. That's it. Number three and number four are kind of interchangeable to me on this list, but it's LeBron and Steph. LeBron, yeah. and James, and Steph Curry. We hit on it a little bit earlier, but the fact that this might be their last great accomplishment, and they did it for America, and I do think that there's a little bit of how good are they really? We didn't really know anymore because the Warriors and the Lakers weren't really playing for anything. But to see LeBron James. Be the best guy at 39 years old on Team USA, which was just loaded a team loaded with the best guys. Mm -hmm. And all of them just look to LeBron and Steph at the end of this thing. Just reaffirms that these are two, like, when all the chips are in the middle of the table, when push comes to shove, when you are when you need a bucket, when you need something to happen, they're still the guys with a capital yeah. T and a capital G. They just are. And that says so much about LeBron James and Steph Curry historically. But it says a lot about where they are still right now. And I would, to me, it was amazing to watch LeBron and Steph play for something. Because yes. it might, we haven't really seen them play for anything since 2022. Well, LeBron was in the conference finals two years ago, but nobody really thought they were going to beat Denver. Um, and we might not ever see them play for anything with this high stakes ever again. That's the thing. And, and to watch them do it again and just be like, oh, oh, they could still get there. Just because LeBron doesn't play defense for an average Lakers team doesn't mean he can't play defense when it really matters. Just because we haven't seen Steph do this since 2022 doesn't mean he can't still do it. Um, it was a good win for them in their own careers, and I think both people... If you ever had either LeBron or Steph outside of your top 10 in terms of you know top NBA players, you got to put them back in it now. You, can't, mm -hmm. you cannot take LeBron and Steph out of your top 10. Those are still two of the best 10 players in the NBA. I don't care who else is the other eight. 
those two guys got to be in there. Uh, you had moments of this tournament for me where I just looked and thought, are are we sure? Am I sure that this isn't still the best player in the world? <laughs> like for I know. both of them, and it's just like holy shit, they're old and like their teams aren't really that good. And I'm just like, are we sure? Like, are Chris, we sure I LeBron is this, the best player in the world? I have been on this so much. I don't know that LeBron is the best player in the world. I know that he is the only player I'd want to give the ball to. In, and still at 39 years old, game seven of an NBA Finals game in the last minute, I want I, I would feel more comfortable with the ball in LeBron's hands than anybody else's. And I don't know what that means in terms of number one, number two, whatever, best in the world, whatever it is. I just know that he is the guy that I want handling the ball. He and whatever a, that means, is that that's what that means. He hit a three, I think it was against France, where it was like they needed just a three to calm things down. And it's the classic mm-hmm. LeBron thing where, like, you know, he, he's – you know, he's gotten better as a three-point shooter as he's gotten older. But it, he always feels like he hits the threes where it's like you need something just to calm everybody down. And he mm-hmm. just, like, created a little bit of room and hits a pull-up three. And it's just so calm. And it's like, I think he's going to hit that shot ten times out of ten. And there's no one else in the world that I think is always going to hit that shot. Number two is Devin Booker. Yeah. Um, I, I What he would the, – the quotes coming out from, like, Steve Kerr, Eric Spolster, all these guys talking about how he's – so willing to do the little things, all that stuff. There was a tweet unearthed from Kyle Kuzma saying, like, year, a couple years ago, that somebody on Team USA just has to want to do the little things, has to do the dirty work. And Devin Booker, like, basically raised his hand on Twitter and said, I'll do it. And then went in and did it. He mm-hmm. was an awesome rebounder, an awesome passer, shot like 60% from three for the Olympics. There's just a knockdown shooter. Uh, if you ever thought that Devin Booker was just sort of empty stats, bad ish team guy, this last year with Phoenix didn't exactly do anybody on that team a whole lot of favors. To me, if you ever had any doubts that Devin Booker was a winning basketball player, that is absolutely erased right now. And he should have been number one on this list, if not for somebody else. But I think that this this Olympic run helped Devin Booker in the eyes of fans, but I think in the eyes of his peers as well, right? You think about Devin Booker, his best friends are D'Angelo Russell and Carl Anthony Towns. <laughs> Two aggressively not winning basketball players, right? Where, But Devin Booker very much is, right? He's sort of the exception of his friend group there. And I think you have to look at him and just be like, oh, this guy has all the things that it's going to take to win a championship. This guy is a championship caliber basketball player. I think among people that aren't like hardcore watching basketball all the time, Wes, I think he might be the most misunderstood star player. Mm-hmm. He is tough. He is smart. He is rugged. He's a really good passer. He's just one of the best, like, 10 players in the world. And he's doing all this stuff. And I, I my, think my think after this Olympic cycle, I think my belief of what his ceiling is and what he could be this year and what that means for the Suns, I, I, I'm kind of talking myself into Devin Booker and the Suns doing something amazing this year. I don't know if I actually believe that or not, but I'm, I'm kind of buying in. I really do buy. I've come to buy, like, Team USA can correlate to something bigger. If you do it really well, and Booker carried himself just in the best way possible, so I'm I'm excited. Number one on my list is Kevin Durant. Okay, I think I would have had Booker one, so make the case for Durant at one. This to me is more of a legacy thing, and when we're talking about legacy versus just where the player is now in their career, I just think legacy wins in terms of importance. But since I mean, Kevin Durant has now won more gold medals for Team USA basketball than any other men's player of all time, right? He has more. LeBron James and him, I think, are the only players with four medals. One of LeBron's is LeBron's. Kevin Durant has four golds. Um, Since the last time he won his last gold medal, though, the Mm -hmm. 2020 Tokyo Olympics, this is what has happened to Kevin Durant in his career. He went to Brooklyn, and it flamed out disastrously. He forces a trade to Phoenix. The Phoenix Suns thing is not working after a year and a half. It just... He's already gone through three different coaches uh, in Phoenix. The the team seems to be a little, you know, strapped in terms of what it is that they're going to be able to do flexibility. I think there's a real question about whether or not Kevin Durant made the right move back, you know, a year before the 2020 Tokyo Olympics when he left the Golden State. It's like, okay, it's just nothing has basically worked out for this guy other than winning the gold medal in Tokyo, right? Yeah. Nothing for this guy's career has really worked out in terms of, what the expectations at least were for Kevin Durant. And four years later, he goes and wins a gold medal and is playing a huge role for a team, willingly coming off the bench, starts in the last game against France, but willingly comes off a bench bench for the majority of this run, 
and it doesn't matter. He's closing every game. He's one of the three guys between him, LeBron, and Steph. And I think this helped a lot in terms of reviving his reputation within the basketball world. It's, And I've made this point before, but Kevin Durant, to me, is the superstar with no home, mm-hmm. right? He's he's not really of the Oklahoma City Thunder. He's not of the Golden State Warriors. He's not of the Brooklyn Nets. He's not of the Phoenix Suns. To me, when I think of Kevin Durant, when it's all said and done, we might just think of him as an American, <laughs> as I mean, mo- Team USA. Right? Most gold medals of any men's player, if I'm not mistaken, four? Correct, yes. And so he, it, and, and the point, all-time leader in points for, in Team USA, men's and women's basketball. So he has accomplished more for Team USA than he has accomplished for any other team in the NBA. And I just think that this Olympics, and this is going to be his last round, really cemented that, right? Mm-hmm. He became the all-time leader in points this run. He got that fourth gold medal, obviously, on this run. And so this was maybe his most important Olympic experience also. And so I, I just think that for him, it it feels like his career was so much of a what if, right? And it just feels like so many things could have happened better for Kevin Durant throughout his career, which sounds mm-hmm. crazy considering how great his career was. But his Team USA experience has been a dream experience. There has been nothing wrong with his Team USA experience. For all the what ifs we might have in Kevin Durant's NBA career, we are left with zero what ifs for Kevin Durant in his Team USA career. It's a great take. I would go Booker one, but I think you've made a very compelling case for Durant right. at one. Very good. We should just note Team USA women won again, yes. most dominant team in US history. Um, and Asia Wilson going through a very well executed, uh, very media trained interview. And then they ask her about Kalea Copper, and she goes, That bitch. Yep. Great stuff, Asia Wilson. <laughs> just Last great moment. stuff. Yep. That game also incredible, very tense. Shout out to France, Gabby Williams, and Marina Hannes, and that team just really put up an incredible fight. But American Foot dominance on the line. is unreal. Uh, they, they got KD'd. They got KD'd. They got KD'd. See, that also happened between the last Tokyo Olympics. Yeah. The foot on the line because the damn foot's too big. But USA Olympics successful basketball 2028 will be exciting. Uh, Frankly, excited for the 2026 World Cup and hoping the roster isn't weird. I want just like a a slightly star-studded roster. That's what I'm I'm going to will into. Can we get John Zion Redemption Tour 2026 World Cup? That's kind of what I want. It's going to be... You know, it's not going to be like on the top of my list of the things I'm thinking about over the next four years about... Who sort no. of emerges as I'm the gonna, next generation of Team USA. Yeah. But it yeah. is going to be a storyline. And it's yeah. going to be something that people think about every once in a while. And then four years from now, we'll do it all over again. Yeah. 2027, I think it'll kick in. We'll be like, okay, where are we at? Yep. I think as we get older, too, it's just like you start caring about this stuff randomly more. I Somebody think. on the Lakers is going to have to be on it because it's in Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah, no Laker or, or Clipper? Somebody on the Lakers is going to have to be on Okay, that. okay. That's fair. <laughs> LeBron? <laughs> You know what? Like, I honestly almost made the joke earlier. Like, okay, so Anthony Davis might be aged out. Steph Curry. Kev- Are we sure LeBron's not going to be on the 2028 yeah. Olympic team? Like, he he said as much no, but it's, it's... Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's just... But... Bronny? Maybe Bronny. <sighs> that, that's actually... Contract the, year. That's actually the Derek White succession plan is Bronny. <laughs> That'd be great, actually. Be funny. Yeah. Be, uh... It's actually Bryce. Bryce will be what two years into his NBA career as a second round pick. Yeah, I have no idea. We're there. Uh, no Laker in LA would be like bizarre. Maybe it's an international Laker. Maybe it's Austin Reeves. Didn't bring him up. Maybe I'm trying to think of like who. Rui. I mean Rui. If Rui's still on the Lakers, playing for Japan. <laughs> that, that's I mean, he played Laker. for Japan this year. He's really good. You know, I'm saying that's is that is that the only Laker? Oh, the, Olympics? the only Laker in the Olympics. Yeah, yeah maybe maybe Rui is the representative there. Maybe yeah. he hasn't been like traded for for. Like a random player by then. Maybe it's Trey Young. Uh not interested in training at the Olympics. Now we're just brainstorming here. This is less podcast material. Yes. All right, we're gonna end there. I'm Chris Manning. That's Wes Goldberg. Thanks to Donald Hydra. Thanks to Zayon. Thanks to Aiden, our production team on the back, and we'll be back later this week with more just basketball. Probably looking a little bit ahead to next season and, and what else could still to come. But more later this week. Thanks to Bed and GM for support for today's show. We'll talk to you soon.